All right, so you're watching this video today because you want to improve your credit score, and I'm here to help you do that. Now, why do you want to improve your credit score? Maybe it's because you want to get approved for that new home, that new car, or maybe you want to pay less when it comes to interest rates or insurance premiums. The list could go on and on when it comes to the benefits of having a solid credit score. So there are two options to fix your credit. You could work with a credit repair agency that slow plays you and charges you, let's say, $99 a month for 12 months, 24 months. They don't really do anything that improves your situation. Or option B, you can work with us and we will quickly improve your credit score. Not only will we wipe all the negative things from your report, but we will eliminate them like they never existed. So I'm here at our office today. I got one of our experts here with us. His name is Joey, and I'm going to let him explain a little bit more about how our process works. What we do is a three bureau report exactly here, and then I highlight all the discrepancies that are on there. Give an example of like what one of those discrepancies were. Yeah, looking at your personal information, and this young lady here in, in particular, you've got TransUnion spelling her last name uh, with an E, and then you've got Equifax spelling it with an A. So those are huge differences as far as her personal information, and it goes on and on there. So I highlight that, and quite honestly, they'll fight that because they don't want to change that because a lot of this stuff is tied to a lot of those accounts. So that's the first thing we attack is that right there, the personal information. Let's clean that up. Let's get that looking good across the three bureaus. Can they legally hold that against someone if they spelled the name wrong? That's a good question. So 15 USC 1681 in its entirety is a good place to start. Anybody that wants to do any type of research on this, that's the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And that's a consumer law that's written for you and I. That's not written for the creditors. So in that specifically, uh, you, you'll do the research, you'll see that it says maximum accuracy is what they refer to. So if it's spelled with an A and spelled with an E, would you agree with me, Logan, that that's not necessarily maximum accuracy, especially yeah. when I tell you as one of the bureaus, hey, we've got this issue here. So mm -hmm. that's the point where a law has been broken. So, so if a law has been broken, then you legally you have are not entitled to hold that against the client. That's exactly right. So as you go through her... Um, some of her accounts that still carries on. So you got TransUnion uh, date open twelve sixteen, and you've got Experian twelve one. Mm. That's a huge difference, man. Yeah. So that's what we attack is that maximum accuracy piece of the credit profile for each of these uh, each of these creditors. So here's where we're kind of similar with the credit repair companies. Let's call it. They'll send the same dispute letter out and they'll try it 15 different ways over a period of 12 to 15 months and they hope for the best. We're going to give them one shot because that's what the law says. Mm -hmm. The law says that you have 30 days to correct this to verify that what I'm telling you is right or wrong. So if you looked at 15 U.S.C. 1681 S2, that's the verification. This guy with all the codes. <laughs> oh, and Well, you have to. Yeah. If you're going to cite the laws because ultimately the remedy is the court system, which we'll get yeah. into here in a bit. But the S2 is the creditor's piece of it that says that they have 30 days to verify what we're telling them mm -hmm. is inaccurate. Yeah. Will they? No, they never do. The average credit repair agency will find discrepancies like you're finding here. They send in a letter, but they don't really threaten legal action. They're leveraging the same laws, per se, that you are, but they're not willing to take that next step, which is taking them to court. You'll hear a lot of them say factual disputing. You'll hear a lot of them that say, you know, the legal piece of it. Um, I've, I've seen a bunch of different versions in a lot of these online uh, mm -hmm. that I'm a part of, and I don't see too many of them doing it right at all. Would you change your model if you're racking somebody for $99 a month over 12 months? That's their whole business model. Mm -hmm. to They're just trying to milk that $99 as long as possible. Man, I don't. I give them the 30 days that the law says that they have to verify. Then the second letter I send out on the 31st day after we do another three bureau report and see that it's it's not been verified and it's not been changed, is I'll send a second letter out that's got a little more teeth. On the 31st day, we're sending that second letter quoting all of the laws and giving them another chance. Now it's delete the freaking thing, man. I'm, not, I'm tired of talking to you. The first one was just fix it. Now it's delete it. And if they don't, that's also what I call a notice of intent to sue. So now it's going to one of the officers in the company. You've got the laws quoted there, and you're giving them 10 days now to change it. On the 42nd day, let's call it, that's when we initiate the lawsuit. We'll file a federal suit with all of the laws that they're breaking and uh, let the courts take care of it. So it's actually a pretty simple process when you get in there. So with this particular client, she had negatives on her file due to her ex-husband, right? Something along those lines, something that happened from a past relationship. And yeah. 
is negatively affecting her today. What has been her response now that, that we've taken her on as a client? She's been all for it. She's very proactive. You know, there's some pieces that we need to be able to legally navigate. You need a power of attorney, first and foremost, that we can operate on her behalf. Mm -hmm. We need an assignment of claims. So for us to do this effectively the way we want to, that's how we get paid is the statutory damages. She gets the improved credit profile. We get paid whenever we deliver the results. I actually looked here. Let's, let's see what he has to say. Because after I talked to him, I asked him the same questions. I actually looked it up. So basically the way it works, for every inaccuracy, whether it was done on purpose or not, actual, you can get one to a thousand bucks. If it caused them any harm, so like they didn't get a loan, it caused them mental distress, it's whatever you want. Is there evidence that that really did cause distress? Because if it did, you're talking bucks. Yes. And also to Andrew, what's wild about this is the bureaus know this, creditors know this, but they also know that 99% of people don't know this. Right. If 1% of people are willing to fight back, chances are they're going to settle with that 1%. And that's what we're doing is we're employing the strategies that bring you into the 1% where you understand how to fight back. The typical credit repair companies that say, get all of your inquiries removed. Why in the flip would you do that whenever you're using those on the back end to show remedy or, or your cure for remedy? Meaning that... When I see he inquired about a veteran's home loan through MRI, I think was the name of it, I don't have to lie. I don't have to say anything that he applied and lost for the loan. If I don't see it on there as an active account, guess what I can assume? He didn't get the loan. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking to the attorney, that's where they're coming from. Now it's a $150,000 loan that Tim lost as a result of the horseshit that's on his credit profile. A three bureau is what we were talking about. And then the POA, obviously we need that. It's notarized and signed. We have to have that legally to be talking to these folks. The assignment of claims and then the personal info. So whenever we get down here to the settlement piece of it, they're gonna wanna know, this is what Equifax asked me about you the other day. What's his date of birth? What's his, uh, yeah, so, so. his address and all of that. The last four, last four of the social because they wanna make sure they got the right person. But if I had these things in a perfect world, there's where I start. So now you got dispute letters we were just talking about. This is where we're uh, building the evidence. You've got the complaint. These are the legal docs. So then you got the summonses. This is the, hey, you've been sued. You got 20 days to answer this complaint. And then you've got a uh, civil cover sheet. So these are all the things that I'm doing. And this is a ton of stuff. Uh, in my instance, which we can walk through, I can show you exactly how I did it and how I Got paid pretty well and got everything off. I'm an 839 credit score right now. That's a flex. That's a flex. The 839, what were you at before you did 660 this? when I started at June 15th of last year. I can give you the cause number. You can see it in federal court and you can see exactly how I did it. By July 15th, one month later, the three bureaus had filed in and that's where the change happens. That's what I was telling Tim earlier. The three bureaus don't want the damages to continue. The thing that they're wanting to do is get this out of court as fast as they can. So they yeah. want their part of their settlement is let's get everything fixed that he says is screwed up. Yeah. That's where I went from 660 overnight to 839, 828, and 8 to 18 across the three. We can charge someone an extremely low upfront cost to get started. And the reason why we even have an upfront cost at all is because you have to have skin in the game. People don't respect free. Because if I say, hey, it's free to get started, you're going to be slow passing those documents that we need for onboarding. You're going to be more serious about this because you paid to play. So then send over the documents. Once the documents are sent, he goes to work. Our legal team goes to work. So from when first letter is submitted to lawsuit time to start winning some back-end settlement money, that's about the 60-day process. Yeah. So that's when you've got the attorney in the mix here. So we try to make it as easy for the attorney as we can, because here's what happens in a typical model. If somebody that's not doing what we're doing this part, the attorney would have to build out everything. Yeah, so you just hand a package, a, a perfect straight. package to an attorney. So now they can fulfill the back end legal side of things. Yes. Is there ever a case where, let's say, it gets to the lawsuit side of things, we're suing the bureaus, the, the creditors. Is there ever a, a situation where the negatives drop before the settlement money or the settlement money is paid and then the negatives drop. Well, how does that usually work out? The negatives will always come off first. So meaning for her, she's got 18 derogatories. So those 18 would be wiped before the settlement money is paid. Perfect. That's the, the that's the order yeah. that happens. So they're going to wipe her profile clean. 
And then the settlement piece of it makes sure that it's nailed down from a, 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 a legal standpoint moving forward. That's the thing that we're different there too, is even if a credit repair company, I'm not beating up on them. I'm sure there's some good ones out there, but even if they have things removed, the debt is still there. The account is still there. All of that stuff is still there because it hasn't been through the court. It hasn't been signed off in a settlement agreement and agreed upon. Mm -hmm. What really matters is your credit report is clean. So when credit repair companies say, hey, we can help you fix your credit, they're just focused on fixing your credit report. But that's only one half of the problem. Yes, you could have an amazing credit report and your collections are wiped, um, you know, other late payments are wiped, et cetera. But the creditors, let's say that you owe $20,000 to someone, that $20,000 is still on the books when it comes to, let's say you had debt with Amex or Chase or whatever. It's still there and they could come sue you at a later point in time. So yes, your credit report is clean, but you still are in trouble on, on the second half of things. Whereas working with us, we're focused on phase one and phase two, wiping it off the report and wiping it from existence. It could never be held against you again because legally there was a settlement. Tim, you had, you had some issues with your credit report. So what was your credit score sitting at before doing this process with Joey? 630, 640, and uh, I knew about Joey's case, we've been friends for a long time, mm -hmm. um, and he piqued my interest with the process. I fell in love with the the potential business and the results for customers. So I was like, hey, uh, I'm interested. Do this with mine. Here's where I'm at. Can you increase mine? The answer to that after getting a report was determined, yes. So six months ago, I was a 676. Let me see. 676 or 680. 684, 676, around that range. And now I'm at a 740. It actually took less than six months. That's just the only time frame that I can show on Credit Karma or whatever this app is. It took like a few, I don't know, four weeks? Five. As soon as that 1D rock comes off, he'll, he'll bust above an 800, no doubt about it. He'll be well above 800 because there's only 1D rock that you have. All the other stuff was just nonsense. Utilization, all that good stuff, so... Then I'm going to be walking around different. I'm not going to be able to fit in doors and stuff. I'm going to have to walk <laughs> sideways. As a guy that owned an auto dealership, this is a great perspective and a conversation to have. If you walked into my lot, my lobby with an 800 score, you would not get out. I would leave, You would stay in the lobby till I sold you something, only because there are so many opportunities for you as a customer from a prime perspective. I can get you in any, I can pick up any phone and call any credit union that there is with an 800 and they're going to take you if you have the income to be able to support that, which some people don't understand. If you're 660 and below, which is where you were at at one time, that's now a subprime, which credit acceptance and a lot of these other subprimes that I would have to use, now you're at the state maximum 25% in Indiana, at least we have, it's, we'd always go 24.99 just standard. But now I'm putting you in an auto loan with credit acceptance where you're paying $200 more a month for a car that's five years old when I could have put you in something the equivalent of a brand new or maybe one or two year old model for that price that you were paying or less. See what I mean? The difference in what your credit score there is huge from a, and that's where I see a lot of folks is trying to buy cars because it's so easy, so fast. And there's this whole subprime industry that's created for folks that have uh, lower scores. So I hated selling single moms a car that's 10 years old at a 24.99 percent interest rate because it's horrible the payment that they were in so there have been some things that you've helped tim with yeah working together that have taken a score from the mid sixes up to a high 700s and that's even pre-settlement yeah the settlement piece of it's just going to take care of the legalities to make sure he doesn't have to face any of it moving forward which mm -hmm. is awesome that's the thing that's not happening in the traditional format or model yeah we're making sure that, you know, the remedy or the cure, I guess you would say, uh, is, is taking care of all of his nonsense moving forward that he doesn't have to deal mm -hmm. with, getting all the stuff off at that time. Got it. So client comes into our pipeline. We collect the documents. Is there any phone call that you need to have with the client to understand more about their situation to like create this package of documents that you're talking about? Um, going through in 15 minutes, I can have everything highlighted that tells me everything that's wrong. So to answer your question, I don't, I don't need that. But I will say if the client thinks that they've had damages in any capacity, which I'm pretty well sure they have, whether it's higher interest rates, whether it's paying 
um, more on premiums with your insurance company. I promise you, you're doing that as a 660 yeah. versus an 800. I, that has definitely happened. Whether you've lost a job or a promotion because that they check your credit for that, uh, whether you've lost a loan, um, all of those things are actual damages. So, if that's so you could see a lot of that within just looking at the at the report. So this particular uh, lady grew about sharing too much of her information. We've already probably shared enough. You you can see in here um, the. This is the thing I hate because I used to own an auto dealership, so I know kind of what's going on here. But these are the inquiries. Mm -hmm. So in one day, she went to shop for a car, and look how many inquiries she had from just one car lot that went out to that many lenders right there. Wow. 20? Yeah. So she got 20 inquiries on one day. I can put the math together and look through here and see exactly what she's doing. If she's, she, she likes cars. She, she applies for cars a lot and has that same thing. So if she didn't get that car, that's actual damages. Somebody owes you a car. Mm -hmm. She's lost a car. She's lost a home loan. She's lost a lot of things. She's paying higher interest rates. I can promise you that. Indiana is. So that's all building this. That's all building this case, if you will, to then make the settlement so easy. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people that I've met over the years have done credit repair, but no one is focused on that second phase of things. Everyone's always focused on that first phase, which is just get the report clean, but that's only one half of the problem. So with the system that we're building out, there's no more lingering problems that are going to exist when we go through the legal side of things, which is settling with the bureaus, et cetera. The irony of that too, Logan, is I used to be that guy. Uh, meaning I had a credit repair company. I've, I've onboarded all the VAs to the disputing and all that stuff, and I found it didn't work, and I was very disheartened. <laughs> so my little credit, it was 24-7 Credit Fix was the name of it. I did all of this in a past life, and I sat, if, if you did, we're lucky enough that after six to eight months you got stuff removed, chances of it coming back mm. later on down the road were very high, which a lot of people, if they've tried this before, know that to be true. This takes it and condenses the timeline down so much and gets everything disposed of legally. So that's that's the key. So I wanted to test it for myself, and I found it to be very not only lucrative, but it got my stuff cleaned up yeah. almost overnight. So I got the, the stuff cleaned up, and then I got paid by following it all the way through. The next test was trying it with Tim. You know, okay, cool. We're all the way there to the settlement piece. We got all the other stuff done. Now we've started that. It's looking like that's going to be very successful as well. And now we're taking on, you know, these, more and more clients, more and more folks that have the same issues, let's call it, with uh, inaccurate information or derogatory stuff. All right, so now that you've seen how our process works, how we have the onboarding, the discovery phase, and then the settlement phase, and disposal of all the negatives on your report, it's time for you to take action. Down below this video, you should see a button. If you click that button, you'll be able to book a call directly with me. We can jump on, I'll answer any questions that you have, and then we can move this process forward. So if you are ready to fix your credit, to improve your financial situation, click that button down below, and we will talk soon.